Greetings everybody, Chaplain Bob here. Uh, this is going to be a real short video for the most part. I uh, thought I would mention a couple of things. I've been having some recurring dreams. I don't know if I've been eating pizza too late and going to sleep or over imagination, uh, overactive imagination or if they mean something. I don't know. All I know is... Uh, very strange so before I tell you the dream let me read you a couple of things from the Bible let's go to Jeremiah 23 I don't want to read the whole chapter I've already done a whole chapter of Jeremiah 23 so let's start in verse 18 for who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. Well, what is a whirlwind? Hurricanes, tornadoes, uh, hit you on a little thing here. There was a tornado that hit uh, in Missouri on an Easter Sunday. I think it was in Joplin. And uh, the female pastor, probably a denomination that, you know, ordains lesbians and what have you, couldn't understand why the Lord would allow that. Why would the Lord allow a tornado to hit us on Easter Sunday when we're gathered here in church and it even killed some of the children? Couldn't understand it. Well, what can I tell you? Uh, New Orleans. Remember Katrina? They were supposed to have their gay pride parade uh, not long before Katrina hit New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't hold that scheduled uh, gay pride parade. Didn't happen. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he he hath executed until he hath performed the thoughts of his heart in the latter days, the last days, right? In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets. Turn on TBN. Turn on the 700 Club. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them. Yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from their evil of their doings. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? Oh, wait a minute. What about all these uh, ultra-rich people and their little secret hidden underground bunkers? What about that? Ooh. Well, let's take a look at something in the Old Testament. Book of Hosea, chapter 10 and verse 8. The high places also of Avon, the sin of Israel. Now remember, when they're talking about high places, uh, they're talking about places of worship. You know, they're building their stairway to heaven. You know, there's a reason why all these pyramids are all over the world. They were probably constructed either by or in honor of these fallen angels 
that want worship. A lot of these pyramids have flat tops. I mean, even uh, the pyramids in Egypt, they don't have the capstone, the top. They're flat on top, from what I understand. The ones in Mexico, they got them in China. They're all over the place. Guatemala, Honduras. Those are Central and South American countries, by the way. So the high places also of Avon, the sin of Israel, shall be destroyed. The thorn and the thistle shall come up on their altars, and they shall say to the mountains, Cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. Ooh. Yep, that's what they're going to say when uh, the Lord comes. Now, Jesus is getting ready to be crucified, Luke 23, and he's being led away. Verse 28, Luke 23, 28. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Why? Because things are going to be bad. You know, blessed are those that never had any children to see the misery and horrible things that are going on. You know, verse 30. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains. Now, this is the wicked talking. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills cover us hmm how about revelation chapter 6 let's read verse 12 and i beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Now, we're going to read a little bit about that in, uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, that's also in Joel chapter 2, which I'm going to cover. I'm going to go through Joel chapter 2. And all these pre-tribbers that say, oh, well, there's no, there's nothing, no sign that has to happen before Jesus returns in the pre-trib rapture. Well, they're idiots and they don't bother to read the Bible. I mean, all they do is listen to their pastors. You know, we're going to go back to Jeremiah 23, by the way, about their pastors and their lying false prophets. We're going to talk about them some more. But first, I want to read about their little, little secret hidden underground bunkers. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. People, that is one massive earthquake. Let me tell you something. Verse 15. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the bill, you know who, uh, the gates of hell and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in their secret hidden underground bunkers. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the Bob translation. They hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us, 
Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? That's right. So, verse uh, Jeremiah 23, 23. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God far off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? Verse 25. I have heard what the prophets said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Now, I'm just telling you what the Lord says about dreams, because I'm going to tell you about some dreams. But I'm hoping that uh, the Lord doesn't consider me a false prophet in any way, shape, or form. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name, for Baal. Baal's just a generic word that means Lord. And it became so associated with Satanism that the Lord said, don't call me by that name anymore. Verse 28. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord. Now, what is the chaff? Well, you know, you got wheat, and there's a kernel. And surrounding the kernel is chaff. Uh, if you ever had an ear of corn, the chaff would be the, the husk, the green husks that surround the corn that you peel off and you throw it away because you don't eat that. That would be the chaff. You know, the, the, the covering of the corn. You eat the corn, but you throw the covering away. That's the chaff. And the Lord compares that the person that has a dream is the chaff and the person that has the word, that is to speak it faithfully, that's the wheat. So let's read that again. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord. So dreams are chaff. And what do you do with chaff? You burn it. Well, false prophets, anyways. Verse 29. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. Yeah, yeah, they're saying, thus saith the Lord, but the Lord didn't talk to them. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord. And do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies. That word err is where we get the word error, you know, wrong. And cause my people to err by their lies, and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, 
saith the Lord. And when this people or the prophet or priest shall ask thee, saying, What is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt say unto them, What burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. And as for the prophet and the priest and the people that shall say, The burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. Hmm. All right, let's take a look at Joel chapter 2. I'm not sure if uh, the description of this mighty army is the heathen army or is it the army of the Lord? I'm not sure 100% right now. Maybe I'll find out when I read this. Uh, those of you that listen for a while, I'm kind of a generalist when it comes to the Bible. I try to know something about the entire Bible. I don't specialize in any one area. I mean, there's one guy I know knew. He specialized in the book of Genesis. I mean, he knew that book inside and out, which is a very important book. It's the foundation. But um, I wouldn't claim to know it as well as somebody that specializes in it but i've got an overview of the whole you know the whole bible and i try, try to know enough that if somebody asks me a question i know where to find things and can give an answer so so let's read joel chapter 2 this is an end time prophecy chapter you know a lot of people think there's more prophecy in the New Testament than the Old. And that's just not true. There's a lot of prophecy. There's prophecy in the Genesis. A lot of it. Oh, we're New Testament Christians. We don't read the Old Testament. That's for the Jews. Oh, really? I've heard that a number of times in a Baptist church. We're New Testament Christians. No, you're not. You're a bunch of New Testament heretics. That's what you are. Uh, that chapter I just read in Jeremiah, uh, if, you're if you're teaching your people the pre-trib rapture, you're one of them false prophets. It's just you're not a false prophet yet. But it'll be proven one day. It'll be proven one day. When that prophecy fails to happen, that makes you a false prophet. And just remember something. The Bible commands God's people to kill false prophets. If they make a prophecy and it doesn't come to pass, and they said, thus saith the Lord, where's God's people were supposed to kill the false prophet. I hope they uh, keep that in mind when they find themselves facing the uh, tribulation. I hope they do. Every Baptist preacher that's taught that as a fact deserves that fate. Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Now remember, this is like uh, several hundred years before Christ even appeared on the scene. Of course, this is from the Lord's perspective. Uh, I think it's Second Peter. It says, a day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. So, you know, when the Lord says, ah, in a day or two, you know, the, the day of the Lord comes, it's close at hand. Well, to the Lord, it's couple of days you know but for us it's thousands of years for the day of the lord cometh it is nigh at hand a day of darkness and gloominess well this is for the unbelievers this isn't for god's people this is this is unbelievers a day of darkness and of gloominess a day of clouds and a thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great 
people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Now, I'm not sure if this was uh, partially fulfilled in the past when the armies of the Assyrians and the Babylonians came and took everybody away, or perhaps this is partly fulfilled in the past and then with an ultimate fulfillment in the future. I'm not sure. It, it could even be the Lord's army in the end times. I'm not 100% sure. I'm kind of on the fence. So, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Verse 3. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Uh, battle array, that's just, uh, armies have formations that protect each other. You know, the guy on your left covers your left, and the guy on your right covers your right, and you're covering the front. So it's just a, a formation just protects, helps give everybody some protection. That's what battle array is. Verse 6. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. So I'm kind of thinking this is uh, the Lord's army. Verse 10. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Isn't this what we read in uh, Revelation? Oh, yeah. Revelation 6. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we did. Revelation 6, we just read that. So I guess this is the Lord's army. Yep, it is. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Verse 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. So yeah, this is the Lord's army. Uh, then again, the Assyrians and the Babylonians were in his control also. But I wonder also if this is kind of a reference to the great army in um, the end times that brings judgment upon his true, God's true Israel. And we're not talking about that little antichrist place over in the middle east that's not what i'm talking about and the lord shall utter his voice before his army for his camp is very great for he is strong that executeth his word for the day of the lord is great and very terrible 
and who can abide it? Only, the, only those that are in Christ, that's for sure. Verse 12, Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart. Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments. See, people would tear their clothes as a sign of grief. But the Lord says, don't tear your garments, tear your heart. And turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. And don't let anybody ever tell you that us repenting and the Lord repenting means the same thing. It doesn't. The Lord is not, does not have sin to repent of. We do. Sometimes the Lord changes his mind on judgment. Read the book of Jonah. I was going to make this a very, very short video, and it's already almost half an hour long. Wow. So it says, For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Now this is where, verse 17 is where uh, they're talking about uh, when judgment comes upon the people. Verse 17, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they, the heathen, wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? People, this is what this is coming true today. The heathen are ruling the people. Verse 18, Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea, and his hinder part toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Huh. 
the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. Do you know that's part of God's great army that he sent among you? Hmm. I'm not sure if this has any bearing, but uh, I think it's worth taking a look into. Uh, we were just talking about the locusts, right? In Joel chapter 2. Let's go to Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Well, doesn't uh, Revelation 6 and Joel 2 talk about the sun becoming dark? This would do it, right? I don't know. Verse 3. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. We just read about locusts in Joel chapter 2, right? And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Hmm. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death. They're going to want to die. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. And shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like, ah, and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were, as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Mm, didn't we just read about uh, the Lord's army uh, climbing up the walls and going through the windows? I, I don't know. Is there a connection there? And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. All right, let's go back to Joel 2, 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath these eaten. Oh, okay, so these can't be the same locust because the locusts in Revelation 9 don't eat the trees, but these ones in Joel 2 do eat trees. So, okay, maybe there's some symbolism in there. I, I don't know. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. God's people will never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward 
that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Ah, oh, remember, I was going to tell you about some recurring dreams I had. And I'm not spring chicken anymore. So, uh, yeah, this is the punchline. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Not false prophets real true prophets of the Lord your old men shall dream dreams that's me your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke didn't we just read about pillars of smoke in Revelation 9, the bottomless pit? Oh, yeah. Pillars of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Uh, all right, well, let me tell you about my recurring dream. Well, in one set of dreams, I had uh, dreams about drones all over the place, keeping an eye on people, those trying to escape. Uh one, there was an enemy army attacking. But then in another dream, uh, was on the, e in a, on the edge of the forest in a house and with a small group of people, I think like three, four, five people. And there were drones flying around trying to get into the forest to get away from everything. Well, that was two different dreams. But then had another couple dreams i don't know this one is really bothersome i was in a by myself in a town or a sit, small city i guess and all the buildings were abandoned there was nobody there nobody was alive i mean the buildings weren't dilapidated they were you know and good shape and everything it's like everybody just left or maybe everybody died and all the buildings were in good shape and was hiding from i knew there were those that wanted to find me so it's kind of hiding in the buildings and stuff but i've had that dream at least twice that i know of Maybe more than that. I think maybe three or four times. I'm not sure. I don't always remember these things. Sometimes I don't want to remember these things. But uh, I wonder if the, uh, the medical treatments that they've been trying to push on everybody lately has anything to do with that. Because why would a, a, a city in good condition be abandoned? Why? Maybe all the people were dead. Or maybe they were told to leave. Relocated. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't even know if the dreams even mean anything. You know, maybe I've got an overactive imagination but uh, they were disturbing, to say the least. So, and I don't claim to be a prophet. No, by no, by no means necessary. The only prophecy I know is what I read in the book. That's it. So, take it with a grain of salt. Take it with a whole salt shaker. What can I tell you? So... All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. 
In Jesus' name, amen.